One door closes, another opens. That is the nature of life. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Many of you recognize these words from Ecclesiastes verse 3, one to chapter 3, 1 through 8. This particular writing is from the New International Version of the Bible. Well, if you don't know the words, I'm sure that they at least invoked some of the sentiments. These words are not gentle, but they are prophetic, as now we are in a time to tear down and a time to build, even a time for refraining from embracing. This is a time for those of us who genuinely care about others to become active allies, not just to witness, not to be so upset that we feel we have done our part because we got upset and went to tears. About feelings, please stop waiting to have events so heinous that they move you to tears or heartache. We all know what's happening to the mar marginalized peoples in this country. Why does it take murder to make us take note? Don't be out of sight, out of mind people. Others are suffering even when you don't want to acknowledge it. Are you wondering why I'm saying these things when these are my final words to this congregation? Shouldn't I be talking about how wonderful my experience has been and how I'm going to miss everybody? Well, more about that in a minute. I've been a member here for 25 years and your minister for three. Yes, your minister. Though there are some who still cannot honor that. I was your two-term board president when we were on the journey that led to our current place of worship. I could tell you stories about that time that you would not want to believe, and controversies of the past year that actually make it easier to leave. I know there are lists of things that I've done, said, mishandled, that you may want to bring forward as a defense right now. After all, she's not perfect. No, I'm not. And neither is this beloved church. You may be upset right now saying, I'm not a racist. I'm not misogynist. I'm not anti-gay. You don't like the words white supremacy, white privilege, white fragility. I know some of you are cringing. Why am I saying these things in this public forum? Well, it is because I want the best for this congregation filled with people I have come to love and care about. I've been in this congregation and at this church for many of its most important events 
and mine also. The plan to move, taking the first shovel full of dirt to build the foundation here. This church has been kind to me. My ordination here was beautiful. My oldest grandchild was dedicated here, and my son's memorial service was held here. This is a place that is special to me and that I hold in my heart. But I don't believe this church can go forward with integrity without acknowledging its growing edges and recognizing how these things might flare up in congregational and community involvement as you wrestle with how to be on the right side of history and actually doing the work of justice. If we have been silent, we know that this is the time to speak resoundingly. This is the time to share our greatest love, to fight the tyranny of hate. When the rallies end and the newscasters have moved on to more titillating subjects, I pray that this church will be infiltrating and interrupting those institutions and systems that have had their knees on the necks of black, brown, red, yellow, and poor people. I've stayed for 25 years because of the theology and the friends I've made here. But it's time for me to go to be with my daughter-in-law and grandchildren, to do more social justice work with my black and indigenous family, friend, peoples, to see what else life has to offer. I offer you peace, love, and grace. Peace, love, and grace to you all. May it be so. Moving on. We picked the theme for today's service, mine and Linda's last. This only seemed of logical because within our life experiences, each of us face many times where we find ourselves moving on. What is the best choice? And sometimes that can be painful and requires us to really reimagine what will be. And other times we come to a fork in the road and it's time to take it, regardless of the time or the reason. So each of us face these moments in our life. How do we end? And how do we begin again? When I am thinking of moving on, I'm reminded of the choice one makes when you're faced with the move. You know, what do I bring with me? What do I leave behind? And what do I take with me when I leave? When I look back at the last 18 months, as far as what I brought, I came here from South Africa. I still remember the first day I arrived in Peoria and it was minus two and I had left South Africa with the equivalent of a temperature of 90 degrees in their summer. And I was really hoping that I could bring warm weather with me. But I was on my way to Peoria and I was excited about the new opportunity, another congregation a congregation that had had a minister, Michael Brown, for 28 years. And I knew there would be challenges. And I knew there would be opportunities. And as I arrived and wondered, what I brought with me was the desire to, and the training of an interim minister, and the opportunity to welcome 
and help a congregation to prepare for a settled minister. When I look back at the time, it seems like it has went like this. And I remember last summer a sermon that I gave called The Elephants in the Room. And I had been here over six months and I had identified elephants in the room. And if you're familiar with that terminology, it's those things that we don't wish to talk about. It's taken from the story, an African uh, folktale where a gentleman goes into a wonderful historical museum and he sees and looks around and when he comes back out, the curator asks him, what did you think of that, all your things? And he tells him, he, going through the list of the things that he saw, and then he said, well, what about the elephant? And he said, what elephant? And from that, the elephant in the room fable began as an illustration of the things that are there but we choose not to talk about. And so as I stand here and think about those elephants in the room that I identified, the one being conflict avoidant, the one being improving communication between each other, and the third one being lack of vision and desire of what you want it to be. And as we look back, we've tackled together each of those. And there's been painful moments and disagreements, but there's been tremendous growth by you in this congregation as you supported and followed your ministers. When I think back about conflict avoidant, we had conflicts, but we faced them. And as I encourage you as you move on and as I leave and take with me this experience, I ask you to continue on in the path that you are in. You know, one of the roles of an interim minister is to help a congregation to understand the difference between change and transition. And when I came here, I remember that first sermon and I talked about the fact that I knew I would hear things like, we've always done it this way. Why do we need to look at things differently? And as I held up a mirror in front of you and asked you to look and to try in ways in which better ways of thinking and being and doing. And many of you have responded. And one of those things is to prepare you for a settled minister. And we had this thing called a pandemic that kind of threw Linda and I in our last few months of how to do ministry and how to reinvent church and how to do services. But one of the things that I am most proud of is that as a congregation, you found a way to adapt you found a way to embrace change. And I was so proud of all of you and those who made it happen that you called a settled minister without meeting this person face to face. You need to congratulate yourself of this accomplishment. This tells me that you can change, you can transform, you can begin to become all that you can be and more. When I think of the things that I take with me, I take with me the many cherished experiences that I've shared with you, the one-on-ones that I've had with many of you as we talked about challenges and problems in your life, and as I've watched you grow and embrace and begin to solve the issues that you were dealt with. And as a congregation, as you become engaged 
in a process, in a way to reinvent yourself. I'm most excited that with what is happening in our country and in our nation, that you are rising up. You are recognizing that it's time for the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria to take a stand, to be heard in this community. Many of you have done the work as individuals, and now you're finding ways in which you can do it as a UU community. And I admonish you to continue in that work, continue in the important work of racial justice, continue to look at your own biases and your own white supremacy as you continue to do the hard work that our people of color have asked us to do for so many years. In a move, we take things with us. I take with me the privilege of having been called to serve you in the growth that you have given to me. I have been changed because I have known all of you. And so how do we move on and how do we end? We do so with joy and with anticipation. And may as you prepare to have a settled minister here, may you continue in the work that you have started with Reverend Linda and myself. You know, what many of you have asked what is in store for me, and as I started the search process and was somewhat into it, I realized that I needed to spend some time at home with my partner. He has been a trooper as he's supported me through the interns, as he supported me through South Africa, as he supported me here. And so together we're going to have a wonderful summer, the first summer we've had in over three and a half years. And in the fall, I will reserve my search for another interim opportunity. There's a song from the musical Wicked that I think sums up some of the feelings and thoughts that I have about each of you. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn. And we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them. And we help them in return. Well, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know I'm who I am today because I have known each of you. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood, who can say if I've been changed for the better but because I have known each of you, I have been changed for good. It well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I've learned from you. You'll be with me, like a handprint on my heart. And now, whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being together. Like a ship blown from its morning, like a wind off the sea, like a sea dropped by a skybird in a distant wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? But because I've known each of you. 
because I have known each of you, I have been changed for good. And just to clear the air, I ask forgiveness for the things I've done you blame me for, but then I guess we know there's blame to share. And none of that seems to matter anymore. Like a comet pulled from orbit and it passes the sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood, like a ship blown from its morning by a wind off the sea, like a sea dropped by a bird in the wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? I do believe I have been changed for the better. And because I have known each of you, because I have known each of you, I have been changed for good. Blessed be 